to this moment Holding out for something golden Found the light on a hill I was waking up Looking for peace in a world that's divided Gotta hold on tight when you find it I was turning around I was waking up Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to a very sunny Saxon, home of uh, Class UK. We're here for another one of its combine launches, this time the Trion. And the man I've got with me today is Mr. Class Combine himself. He is the Class Combine guru. It is Mr. Adam Hayward. So Adam is going to give us a good walk around the new Trion combine, front to back, top to bottom, and we're basically going to find out all about it. Right, Adam. Yeah. Brand new combine series, the uh, the Trion yeah, series. So yeah. I mean, first of all, flesh out the family. Where does it sit? Yeah, What's it made it, up so of? So the Trion, obviously a new a name. We say goodbye to the Takano range, and hello to the Trion range. We're phasing in a completely new model range. So it sits underneath the new Lexion range, the thousand series, eights, sevens, sixes, and five thousand series. I sat up at the top. The underneath we have the or previous generation we had the Takano range we say goodbye to those today and also that threshing system as well with the 450 millimeter threshing drum and we say hello to the Trion range in the Trion range we have hybrid machines 700s and we have straw walkers 600s and 500s as well so it's a big range yeah. and when we launched the new Lexian range we opened up uh, some gaps that's um, it the Lexian range kind of grew up a little exactly. bit didn't it, it yeah. went a little bit bigger a bit more performance so we left some customs behind people with Lexian 650s or Lexian 750s for example didn't have a direct replacement they'd either have to step up in capacity not everyone wanted to do not everybody wants to do that they want to sometimes maintain the same they know their performance level they know exactly how big the trailers are so that yeah then nothing has changed they want to do the same amount of area so we were conscious of this and we've disguised a little bit with Lexian sales and also Takano sales, but we were, we did know that there was a gap and introducing this new product range will fill that. Yeah. Uh, it's a really solid Fill it range. and more. <laughs> Absolutely. With yeah. the availability of things that we've never had before. So the machine behind me here, that 730, that has tracks and we've never had tracks on uh, this size machine yeah. before. So yeah, bringing more tracks, more Montana machines, so the hill leveling machines as well throughout the complete range. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the range, I mean, just give us like an idea of the size of the range, you know, the, the horsepower ratings, the, yeah. the tank sizes, yeah. things like that. So um, I've got one behind me here. We've got the 730 behind me. We have the, the three hybrid machines. We've got the 750, 730 and 720. The 750 sits at the top with a 12,000 litre grain tank and 435 horsepower. That is a twin rotor machine with a 600 millimeter threshing drum at the start. So yeah, APS, the threshing system at the very start that we know in the class family and then into the twin rotors, the same as what is in the Lexium. What is different in, with the 730 and the 720, it's a single rotor machine. Larger diameter drum, so that's that 600 millimeter threshing drum that we know from the Lexian, yeah. previous generation Lexian, but the larger single diameter rotor that we have in the previous generation Takano. That sits in a real nice package for us. And that is where we see um, uh, a real uptake in volume. Yeah. Uh, one being available on tracks and also available on that Montana as well will be a real nice package. Below that, we have our 600 range. Six means six walker, and 500 means five walker. You've been thinking about this again, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it matches with Lexian as well. So if you have a five, you're a five walker, the same as a 5000 series, 
the same story with a 6,000. Uh, it's the same story. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of like a, a similar story with the Lexians, what's your, so, uh, your, your drum width, your throat width yeah. almost? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we, we call them chassis sizes or um, it's it's effectively a five walker chassis or a six walker chassis. So a five walker chassis is a standard body machine at 1.4, two meters wide. That's the width of the machine. And then you go to the six walker chassis, which is 1.7 meters wide. That's the same story in the Lexian as it is in the Trion as well. So it's, uh, yeah, you either have the standard body or the wide body machines. So most of all, yeah, again, the design of the machine is very similar to what we would know as a class machine. So yeah. likes of the track system, uh, the belt itself, all the belt widths are the same as what we have on the Lexium. You can see some other different update features like the, the clear caps on, on there. So you can see your idlers, uh, oil levels, little things like that, little details around the machine. But essentially it is the train, same track unit that we use on our other machines. So that's suspended track. At the front end, you can see the front elevator. And as for option wise or limitations like that, there's not very many limitations. You can have all the way up to a full header pitch, hydraulic header yeah. pitch control. Full on Montana style. Full Montana, all the way to the standard feeder house with a dust extractor on it as well, as we know from previous So that's pretty so. much taken straight off the Lexians. That's the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. identical system. With also the cross uh, cleaning as well for the elevator as well, just to keep that, that area clean. As for transmission wise, so, obviously transmission uh, driving, whether you're a track machine or wheeled machine or a Montana machine, there are two speed transmission, either standard mechanical shift yeah. or you can option up to electric shift as so well. So you pretty much have either, either or. Either or. Keep everybody happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Keep, um, yeah, it's a real mixture of customers that some people like the comfort of an electric shift. Others are quite happy to move the lever. Um, so yeah, it's uh, either or you can choose on, on this machine. Then we move into the threshing system. We can see our variators up on this side of the machine. We had a little bit of a redesign in those. So uh, we strengthened them a little bit more. We're putting more power from them than previously. And also this visible wear. So actually from a, a home maintenance point of view, so farm maintenance, we can actually see if um, there is any wear in there. It's just a simple wear strip that we would replace rather than having to completely dismantle so the whole So you can literally barrier. just keep tabs on it. Exactly. As for elevator wise, returns elevator increased in capacity and also with a main grain elevator as well you make a machine bigger you, than the Takano for example you need bigger elevators I'll to keep that it. grain moving as for the quantimeter so the yield measurement on the machine it's the same as what we've got on the Lexian so we've moved away from a volumetric measurement to a mass flow system and that's been made a lot more accurate uh, in recent years as people demand more and more accurate yield maps for agronomical reasons yet we uh, we've got that sitting there open in the grain tank as well all the fuel tanks on all the machines sit on this side of the machine uh, out of the way they're up to a thousand liters and on the smaller machines they're an 800 liter tank I'll say uh, well out the way like I said there's no belts running exactly. sort of through them behind yeah them. <laughs> like yeah we, we've we've uh, been down that route and we've, yeah, yeah. we've moved on <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely so yeah that's all sitting on this side of the machine as for the back end so straw chopper wise we've got a number of options here now this is our standard spreader hood we can go all the way up to a full radial spreader, so uh, rotating discs with arms that move across for help in direction. But it's really a focus on, it, you can pick what suits your situation, because we have some customers don't even want the straw chopper, and then we have other customers that need a really fine chop for incorporation back into the soil. So it's a real mixture. We don't have just one chopper that fits all. Um, we, we really do select it for, for the size of machine. So if you were putting on the, the bigger uh, hybrid machine, you'd have the bigger, more powerful spreader to spread up to 10 meters, even 12 meters if you want to put that size header on. And then all the way down to a smaller uh, header, sort of a five meter header even, you can just have the standard spreader hood on there as well. So just to suit uh, your conditions and your requirements as well. As for grain tanks on the machine, we go up to a 12,000 litre grain tank. Um, this is the 11,000 litre grain tank on this machine. When we go to a 10,000 litre tank, we're going to this satellite style. It's what, again, another thing that our customers requested was the satellite style. They like um, this uh, design type opposed to the, the square or the box type tank. But uh, yeah, so nice, big, easy to get in and out. We've got the access steps there, the yield monitor, is actually located there on the bottom of the bubble up auger. You can see our extra fill sensors and our GPS antenna that is located inside the, the grain tank here. All self folding. You can actually still fold the grain tank in with the machine running. Another important feature our customers like being able to around the headland for the first time around. Yeah. They want to go underneath trees. So you can actually harvest, so you get about a couple of ton in the bottom of there with the grain tank links folded. Right. And as you're going, you can open them up as well. As for engine-wise, we have a new engine manufacturer for this year. 
We have Cummins for the first time right. uh, in this size of machine. Cummins isn't new to us at class. We've actually had it in the Avera for a few years. Um, the, the engine block itself, we either have a nine liter engine or a 6.7 liter engine um, power unit for these machines. Um, nice, good lump. And also how it fits in our picture. Class is a global manufacturer need an engine supplier from a global perspective. Um, we, we manufacture machines, not just in Europe, um, these machines, uh, uh, actually the engine comes from the UK. Normally it's always traditionally we had Mercedes engines and then moving forward, we, we needed a new solution. We needed a, a certain torque level sort of power output and also um, a simple power unit to power these machines. You, you can get uh, over complicated. When we get to the bigger size machines, we need a different category of engine. So when we're on this size machine, we need something it's got there that's more robust, easier to work on. So as from a service point of view, actually really simple mm. you have your engine block you have your cooling system and you've got your after treatment you've got your hydraulic services over there so just all separate elements. all separate elements so it's from an engineer he doesn't need to re rethink anything on that and there is no egr on this machine it's all the after treatment is done on the exhaust system and as for the cooling system we have two styles of um cooling systems this is the planar style so you can see just the arms uh, that uh, oscillate over the radiator to keep it clear. And then when we're on the straw walkers, we have the traditional sort of style rotary screen on the, on the cooling pack there. So two different styles, depending on the size of the machine. As for servicing, for a daily servicing, it's very easy. You've got your dip, you've got your coolant, and of course your cleaners there as well. All the hydraulic fluid is just on the side of the machine as well. So it actually makes life a lot easier. Diesel uh, and add blue uh, filler cap, uh, nice, easy to get to. Um, the, um, you often experiment with different things, like um, I know some uh, people do experiment with ground fill. Ground fill tanks don't fit on these machines. Yeah, there's no room for sieve boxes and so forth uh, with uh, ground fill tanks or fuel delivery. If you add some complexity in this mm. system, it makes it, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's room for air outlets. Yeah. Um, adding any extra seals or pumps to the machine adds complexity that's not required. So we actually made it a, a lot simpler, single tank uh, design to actually filling can be done on a farm level yeah. rather than a, a specialist filling system. That's it. So it's just made as simple as possible. Yeah. yeah. It's quite a bit of a, a story sort of theme with this combine development, trying to make mm -hmm. things as simple as possible. Where you don't need things, yeah. you've literally omitted them. It was decided and it was, that was all decided upon actually from the customer's perspective. So the likes of the straw chopper engagement, uh, which we can see on the, on the left hand side of the machine, it's been made more manual rather than thinking that we always need electronic shift. It's like the tr transmission uh, as well. We have a manual transmission because people don't actually regularly change gears that often. So yeah, it is a common theme throughout the whole design of the machine. Yeah. Uh, made simple. Yeah, yeah. Get rid of it if it's not needed. That's yeah. it. And, it's, uh, and it, this popped out the other side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just probably more in using new techniques, thinking smarter than actually uh, redesigning something, I, I think is the, if you've got a product that works and you know works well in your conditions, uh, for example, um, the 600 millimeter threshing drum works very well. Um, the synchronized concave adjustment, hydraulic concave overload protection, synchronized drum drive, it, it, things that work well have not been forgotten about. No. They've, they've been put in and, and um, are liked by our customers. So again, it's, it's well proven stuff, but likes of, yeah, we, we've removed things that just weren't being used. Um, for example, yeah, that was what we were just talking a second ago about the straw chopper drive. So nice, simple, it's you've been seen before, so they're nothing revolutionary, but uh, not the most difficult thing in the world to uh, engage or disengage. Well, that's so it, especially if you're just doing that once a day. Yeah, once a day, even it's, it's light enough to just push in and out. So it's- And that's it. That's, that's it in and out, it's as simple as that. So yeah, not uh, the most complicated system in the world, but nice little features. Just, you think you're disengaging drive, you're not moving stuff, Simplicity in there. There's no overcomplicating it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feature. We've also added more access. So you can see we've taken off these um, side panels off the machine. So to get to the rotors themselves. So again, another customer request. They want to be able to clean down their machines better. Um, get in access uh, to the actual rotor cages so they can clean out better. So we've done that. Uh, as you can see, you can see right in, you can see the rotor fingers there or the actual rotor cages and also the bomb doors or the rotor cover plates on this machine as well. So you can physically get right inside that machine. There's actually a lot less belts on this machine as well. So this hybrid machine has six less belts 
than uh, the previous generation Lexion. And if you take a straw walker, it's got three less belts than previously. And that's been done by, um, um, again, linking some drive systems together. For example, this is the Sivbox drive. We've put Jetstream on all, eight, on the, all the range of Trion, which is known from the Lexion. It's a simple, robust, easy to set up Civ. Top, bottom, and fan speed. There's no wind deflectors that you need to set, no preloading of sieves or anything like that, or, or pre sieves. Um, very simple setup. And that's um, also a simpler drive system. Simpler drive system means it actually takes less power to drive and requires less belts to drive. So uh, hence, yeah, you can, you can lose belts on the machine that aren't yeah. required. Um, again, well proven, well known system um, to us at class. As for the main drive clutch, we talked about that, it's taken from the forage harvesters. Uh, it's also the same story on the Lexians as well. So real smooth engagement of the drive system. So, so no noise no, like sounding. Yeah, no squealing pig when it starts. <laughs> That's it, standing yeah. on a Jack Russell. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right, yeah. So no squealing pig when you start up. So nice and smooth engagement uh, on that side of it. Um, so yeah, making, making life a little bit easier. As for a standard machine greasing, we have these banks of grease nipples on the sidewall of the machine. If you go for a comfort greasing, or, or easy greasing, there's actually another bank of grease nipples here that greases the whole side of the machine. So you're not searching inside the machine. But as from a maintenance point of view, there's no 10 hour grease nipples on these machines. They're all uh, 50 hours or 100 hours on the machine. So um, yeah, quite long service intervals on these. And loading systems are, as we know, so we can go up to 130 liters a second on the unloading system. So all our tanks can get unloaded in double quick time. And as for uh, optional of the auto lube of the chain as well, something that our customers do also like uh, on the machines. So yeah, these are nice, nice, easy, straightforward um, on that side of it. Nice things on this new machine is this section of the concave is fully removable. So we can interchange it with larger, narrower concaves, depending on what crop you're actually doing. We're talking to people about more and more diverse rotations. People, all sorts of things are being dreamed up some doable, some not um, <laughs> in our conditions. But yeah, it, it's quite normal to um, be talking soybeans one day to lupins, grass seed, um, lots of different crops uh, uh, people are trying in the rotation. Joy of this setup is, gives the ability to do that. Uh, we can set it up with a wider concave if we're doing a lot of beans. Um, likewise, if we're doing, uh, we, we want to improve our sample, we can put a tighter concave in there, for example, in oilseed rape. And it, it also, cleaning out the machines. So yeah, fully removing the concaves out the side of the machine, the full width of the machine, gives us the ability to really get in there. I was gonna say, how do you actually get that concave out? Um, it's currently in its most down position. So it's, all right. it's wide open. Yeah, yeah. That's a big concave. So gap. you pull that in and it's just- What you just... do is just remove this bolt, just like this. Uh, just take those two um, eight mil Allen keys out there and it physically slides out of the sidewall um, of the machine. Other things you can see here, the concave adjustment, is uh, similar to uh, all class combines, how they adjust is hydraulically adjusted with an overload protection. So if it does get a big lump for it, it will drop its concave mm. down and reset itself. It doesn't work on a shear bolt system. Um, it just has a hydraulic overload protection. And as for the impeller drive, that is driven off the back of the drum. So that third drum in the system is synchronized off the threshing drum. So when you set that drum speed, the first APS drum, the main threshing drum and the impeller are all driven off that same pulley. So they all are synchronized. All so this is back to that Synflow system exactly from right, the, yeah. uh, the Lexians. Same story. Yeah, there we go. Exactly right. yeah. And as the material transitions into the rotor, we can see um, the material is pushed, as this is a single rotor machine, it is pushed to a single rotor and then into the rotor speed uh, that is adjusted up the rear there. So again, more separation power. If you need more separation power, you speed up your rotor. Likewise, opening and closing and controlling the separation area is done via the bomb doors. Uh, they're hydraulically engaged and you can engage them on the go as well. So if you are overloading your sieve, you're getting, it's uh, too much chaff, too much material, you're getting some sieve loss on the machine. What you can actually do is close off, for mm. example, the most common is done in oil seed rate. You can close parts of the actual concave underneath the rotors. So reducing the amount of separation area on the machine. So again, holding the material in there, putting it out of the back of the machine rather than dropping it down. Yeah overloading that sieve, making that sieve work harder. So as for the walking machines, we've got the same principle at the front. Yeah. So threshing drum at the front, APS, threshing drum, and then impeller. But then instead of the rotor system, we have the straw walker. And they're a 4.4 meter long open walker design that we previously have known. 
Also with the MSS on top, so we're helping multi-time systems are pulling the straw mat up, helping free any loose material. So just helping ease uh, the walker load as well. As for up the top there, so we have a new cabin on these machines. So this is the first class platform to get the new cabin. Although, yeah, it's not um, too dissimilar. We've just uh, improved on what we had. So slimmer pillars, so better vision to the cutter bar. We've improved the mirrors. So again, better vision out down the side of the machines, keeping it a lot neater compared to the previous one. We've actually reduced the number of bars. It's difficult to show with, uh, with the door uh, open like it is there. So again, still better vision to the front of the cutter bar. You actually sit further back and further down inside the cab. There's a lot more headroom above there, a lot more storage as you would expect. Yeah. And of course, all the new mod cons as you would also expect. Bigger fridge, uh, subwoofer, DAB radios, LED light packages. Everything that would be as you'd expect on a new modern machine is there. That's uh, it. Nothing's missing. It ain't going to make you uh, combine any better, but it's Correct. Nice. <laughs> yeah, there's no more tons in that grain tank. Yeah. It just makes the day a lot nicer. But in terms of controls and interfaces, that's pretty much all the same as yeah, what as was introduced on exactly Lexians right. and Jags. And yeah, exactly right. The the Seba screen is as we know. Um, so again, we, we haven't modified that because it's actually relatively new. We launched it in 2019 uh, on the Lexian range and on 2018 on the Takano yeah. range. So it's it's still a new modern uh, interface for us. We actually do more through that screen now because these machines you can fit Seamless Automatic to as well. So features that we could only offer in the Lexian range previously, we can offer it on the full range. So yeah, potential is, is again, something our customers requested. They want perhaps a smaller chassis machine with more efficient technology on mm, this. Or just making, making the most of it. Exactly right. So making the maximum of the box that they have. Right, so final stretch, Adam, back yeah. to the front. Absolutely. Um, yeah, header options on this uh, header the Trion. Options. Yeah, Trion. So we can go all the way up to a 12 meter cutter bar on the Trion. Not everyone will be going 12 meters with uh, this category of machine. Uh, we'll see mostly with the 750s, either 10 meter bars or nine meter cutter bars on the machines. And options all the way down to a five meters. Now, we have uh, offer the Convio, which is our Draper header in rigid or flex. And we also have our Vario cutter bar as well, which is behind me here. And we also have our Serio, which is our non-Vario um, table auger uh, machine. So lots of different header options. And this new Vario, the larger Varios actually have a new real drive that you can see on the side here. So you can get full knife travel when you have the side knives on. So you can actually get the table right back. Exactly right. And at the, the problem it was only on the large cutter bars at the moment. Um, so yeah, from 10 meters to 13.8. Now, what we're finding, people are using the side knives in more conditions. Actually, they, they're using them in beans, they're using them in barley sometimes. Yeah, twisted barley. Not, not just <laughs> oilseed rape. So we're finding alternative uses for them. And we've got a new designed side knife as well. So mechanically driven as opposed to hydraulic. It's a lot lighter, easier to put on as well. So that is what we're seeing actually. Very much still the Vario is still our most popular cutter bar still. Although the perception is that the Convio is. Yes, we do very well with the Convio and we, we've um, had uh, some good volume through that. But still, our Vario is still the most popular cutter bar um, that we offer. Yeah, Basically got something for everybody. Absolutely. And everything in between. <laughs> That's yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Right, there you go, boys and girls. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. A really good flavour. Thank you very much to uh, Adam Haywood. Thank you. As ever. So, yeah, can't wait to see what you guys are up to next time. Always keep them busy. Because you yeah, developed yeah. the Lexian, yeah. the big piece. You distracted us all. Yeah, and yeah. all the while, you had the uh, tree being worked on in the background. So, yeah, spot on. Thank you very much as ever. And, uh, yeah, again, hopefully you guys have learnt a bit from that. time. as ever, we'll catch you again next time. Cheers. Between us oh.